Hi everyone and welcome to the lab on the lethal effects of ultraviolet light on microbes. We're actually gonna, if we were in lab, we would be testing the effects against two different bacteria. I'm gonna have you guys walk through the motion of doing your inoculations and then I'm going to give you some results from a previous semester for you to analyze. So uh, as an introduction to this lab, a little bit about UV radiation. So there's lots of different types of electromagnetic radiation. All the light that we see is a type of electromagnetic radiation. It's somewhere in the middle-ish of the EM spectrum. And just above that is ultraviolet radiation and then x-rays and then gamma rays. So as we move left here, we're seeing the wavelengths get shorter. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. And so ultraviolet um, x-rays and gamma rays are actually forms of ionizing radiation. They do damage to cells. Actually, ultraviolet is not ionizing, but it damages in a different way. X-rays and gamma rays, they basically cause free radicals to form. And those free radicals can damage various molecules in the cell, including DNA. It can cause DNA breaks. So all of these different types of high energy radiation are great for sterilizing things because they anytime you break DNA you're essentially damaging the cell's ability to reproduce properly and um, with integrity. So for um, larger organisms like a human when they're exposed to radiation the dangers of it are um, there there is such thing as acute radiation poisoning but there's also sort of chronic radiation issues like developing cancers the inability of cells to divide properly so as humans we don't have a ton of cells that are constantly replicating but microbes and single cellular organisms are constantly replicating they are basically doubling their populations every you know every hour or so so they are very susceptible to different types of radiation. We use gamma radiation to sterilize some types of foods and some plastics. Um, ultraviolet radiation is used to sterilize a lot of water treatment facilities. It's even used in hospitals. It's used in nail salons for the sterilizing the tools. Right. So the, the thing that makes UV great, and I guess I'll get to this. Okay, so there's different um, types of UV light. UV light can be broken into these distinct ranges, UVA, UVB, and UVC. And it's in that UVC range here, which is between 100 and 280 nanometers, the wavelength size, that is most fatal to bacteria, that's most lethal. And so technically the ideal sterilizing uh, frequency is a wavelength of 264 nanometers. That is the peak of the bacteriocidal ability of that UV light. Okay, um, so this is a light that's not typically, the UVC range is not actually one that we're exposed to from sunlight. So from sunlight we get UVA and UVB, but the ozone layer actually blocks UVC or it absorbs UVC radiation. So not a lot of it makes it to the surface of the earth. So um, when we're using sterilizing UV lamps, those are different than the UV lamps that you would have in like a tanning bed, which uses either a UVA or UVB, um, both of which can cause damage to the skin and lead to cancer, but also ultimately lead to increase in melanin, mel melanin production, which makes your skin darker. I always get confused between melanin and melatonin. Melatonin is the sleepy hormone and melanin is the dark pigment. Okay, so when UV light reaches or when UV radiation penetrates a cell into the nucleus, what it does is it catalyzes this reaction where two thymidines that are next to each other in the DNA sequence end up getting stuck together. They form what's called a dimer, um, a twin pair, and that causes a kink in the DNA. And then the DNA polymerase can't read it properly and it gets tripped up when it's trying to do replication. And so then it can't replicate the DNA properly and then the cell can't divide and it ultimately dies. All right, so um, UV, that's how UV sterilization works. It works by damaging the DNA of the microbe specifically by causing these thymine, thymidine dimers to form. It's also what it does to our skin cells and how cancer can arise 
is through these thymidine dimers that don't get fixed and that mess up our polymerases and screw up cell cycle regulation. So um, the pros and cons of UV sterilization, so, uh, so I guess it's kind of a pro and a con that it doesn't penetrate materials very deeply. So x-rays can go through soft tissue but not hard dense material so that's why you can use them to visualize bones because the bones stop the x-rays um, gamma rays go through everything pretty much except for lead thick layers of lead um, but uv can only make it through about a piece of paper you know wearing a shirt protects you from uv radiation outside wearing a thin layer of chemicals sunscreen protects you from uv radiation and if you're not protected it's really only the skin that's damaged that surface organ on your body so um, it's safest to work with it's safer to work with than x-rays and gamma because it doesn't penetrate but the downside of that is it can only then sterilize surfaces surface areas so you can shine a uv light you can have uv lights installed in a in an or and everyone can clear out the room and you turn on the uv lights and every all of the surfaces in the room will get sterilized by that but not inside drawers or under cloths or things that if there's a shadow falling on it so it's something to consider um, so there's there are safety precautions when working with UV light you can burn yourself you can burn your skin and you can burn worse your corneas of your eyes so it's always important to wear eye protection not to look at UV light and not to shine it on your skin so really um, treat it like it's like a laser like a laser like a dangerous laser I did have friends in grad school we used UV light to visualize certain DNA stains on gels and so we'd have these light boxes that shone a UV light up and there was a cover you're supposed to put down that blocks the UV but I had friends who were too lazy to put the cover down and they would just look at it and and they burned one of them burned their cornea um, you don't feel it burning just like a sunburn you don't feel your skin burning necessarily out in the sun it's later so um, yes so if you're working with actual UV you definitely want to be careful it can harm you um, so I will be working with a UV lamp here live today and I will be demonstrating those safety precautions that I would take. Um, so the two bacteria that we're going to test in this lab are Bacillus subtilis and E. coli, Escherichia coli. So Bacillus subtilis is a rod-shaped bacillus bacteria. It's gram positive. We can see that in this gram stain here. It stains blue. And it also happens to be an endospore former. So that means if we make a culture and we let it grow a little past its prime, so we let it go past log phase and into stationary phase, and even into that death phase, that's when the spores start to form in culture. So we would we would use a culture of, of old bacillus subtilis cells, a couple of days. So they're past that log phase and that they have sporulated. Remember, endospores are really um, tough shelled, basically cells that are dormant until conditions become good. And we're gonna take them from the poor conditions of their old used up media and put them in fresh media and expose them to UV light. E. coli is also a rod. It's a very short rod, but it's a rod. It's gram negative, hence the pink phenotype here. And it is a non-endospore former. So these guys don't have that ability to tuck up and put a hard shell around themselves and be protected from tough conditions. Um, just for some fun like pathogen uh, trivia about each of these. Um, Bacillus subtilis is not a pathogen. It's a soil microbe, so it's really safe to work with in lab. E. coli, there's so many strains of E. coli. The one that we work with in lab is, is really innocuous, um, would not make you sick if you accidentally ate it, but um, e. coli is one of those bacteria that it can cause infections if it gets in where it's not supposed to be. So while if you sipped the culture, you'd probably be fine. Um, but if you got the spilled the culture into a cut or somehow got it into your urinary tract, all right, it could cause an infection. So that's the thing with bacteria is a lot of them are not, you know, 
it's not black and white. It's not pathogen or non-pathogen. A lot of bacteria can be pathogens if given the right opportunity. So even though E. coli is considered a BSL-1 organism, very safe to work with in the lab, nothing is 100% safe or risk-free. Uh, so that was just like a little extra trivia there for you about these two types of bacteria. But I want you to notice the differences. I picked the things that are same. They're both rods. Okay, but I picked one that's gram positive and one that's gram negative, one that's an endospore former, and one that's a non endospore former. So those are things we're going to be comparing between. So in this experiment, what we're going to be doing, this is sort of the overview, and then I'll demo it for you, is we're going to be inoculating a plate with bacteria. And so we're going to draw a line down the center of the plate, and we're going to inoculate in these green stripes here. That's how we're going to inoculate. So we're not going to do streak for isolation. We're not going to do it in the shape of, you know, we're doing it in this specific way where we're streaking it evenly across both sides of the plate is the goal here. One side of the plate we're going to cover with foil, okay? And that is going to be the control side of the plate. So that's going to show us how the bacteria would grow with no UV light. And the other side of the plate we will expose, you know, we'll get exposed to the UV light and we'll see a difference in growth on that side of the plate and that will show us so then we'll be able to compare the growth on the uv side to the growth on the non-uv side and we assume that it would grow equally on both sides if we didn't use the uv light so um, you're going to be labeling so let's set it up all right so things that you're going to need let's get my little lab station ready okay so uh First, you need to wipe down your station with uh, something like Clorox, something antiseptic. Um, my jacket's a little bit loose, so I think I'm going to remove it. I am going to be working with fire. And here we go. You're also going to need your gloves. You're going to need a Petri dish and your china marker to label it. Ah, I want to draw my glove. And you're going to need your culture, a broth culture. So just, you know, some mustard and water or paint and water. I got, mine actually has growth in it now. It's kind of gross. You can see it. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna, mine's all clumpy, so I'm just gonna tap the tube oops, so you can see it so that it's all suspended it's still kind of gross this is an overgrown culture i'm not truly doing the live lab here you're also going to need your piece of foil you're going to need your your loop and you're going to need your bunsen burner so i'm going to start by labeling my plate so i'm going to draw a line down the center of the plate here always on the auger side the bottom side of the plate Okay, so the lid is on the lid is on the bottom and the bottom is on the top. It's kind of confusing. Okay, so um, we're gonna label one side UV and one side foil. And we're also gonna label with our initials and the date. Now, if we were in real lab, I would break you guys up into groups and half of you would inoculate your plate with bacillus, subtilis, and half of you would inoculate with E. coli. Um, and so you would need to write your bacteria type on there, but since we're just doing this mock, I didn't write the type of bacteria, okay? Um, and now we're going to inoculate. So I'm gonna keep my, my plate face down. I'm gonna put my china marker aside. I'm gonna light my Bunsen burner. And I'm going to go turn the gas on. Should get some lab music going here. Okay. All right, so I got my Bunsen burner lit. Got a nice blue flame. I'm going to flame my loop. Do, 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 getting it nice and nice and hot. And I'm flaming it all the way to the end. And you guys don't have to show me your full time in the 
in the flame as long as you say that you do it for 10 seconds or you do it till it's glowing red. And then I'm gonna let it cool. I'm not gonna weave it around. I'm going to take my tube and I'm going to take off the cap either carefully with one hand or the easier beginner way to do it is with your pinky of your loop hand. Go in, get a little bit of culture, close up the tube, replace it in the rack. And now we're just going to use that one um, bit of culture. I'm going to move that out of the way so I can get closer to my camera here. Right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my plate and so I can show you, I'm just going to make stripes along here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do four, five, six, whatever you can fit. And I just went evenly from one side to the other. And if you can see my little streak marks, I don't know if you can see it a little bit if I angle it. Okay. So there's just streak marks going across that perpendicular to that line that I drew in the center of the plate here. I'm gonna sterilize my loop so I can turn off my flame. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap the foil side of the plate with that piece of foil. Okay, the first year I did this experiment, I made the mistake of thinking that the Petri dish um, was not UV resistant but it is. So you have to take the lid off in order to do this. So when we do the light shining, and this is my UV light, it's like the oldest lamp from like the 70s. The bulb probably needs to be changed, but so far it still works when I do it in lab. So just take your piece of foil, and on the, the side that's labeled foil, all right, this side here, I'm gonna take my foil, Oops, I gotta take the lid off first. So the side that says foil, which is this side, I'm gonna be careful not to stick my hands in here, not to touch the bacteria that I just put on there. I'm going to wrap this side in foil. And actually, sorry, a better way to do it. With the lid on, I'm gonna make a little foil cap for it. That's what you should do. So I'm just gonna shape the foil into this little foil foil skull cap or something for this plate. Okay, so now I safely did that. And now that I'm ready to shine the UV light, I'm going to carefully remove the top. I'm gonna paste, place it um, lid down on the bench top. I'm gonna carefully slide my Petri dish in here and then I'm going to shine my UV light on it. The UV light is on, you can see it. I'm not gonna look at it with my eyes and I'm not gonna shine it on my skin, but I am going to hold it over the plate for 30 seconds or two minutes or whatever my assigned time is. And I'll use a clock to make sure that that's, um, uh, that I'm making using an accurate amount of time. And then when that time is up, Remove the foil, put the lid back on the plate, invert it, and put it in the incubator for about 24 to 48 hours. And actually, I don't even need to put it in the incubator. I can do it at room temperature. And that is the experiment. Now I'm going to make a separate video looking at some of the results and how to analyze the results. The end. Oh, except, of course, Bunsen burner's off. I'm going to wipe down my... Uh, tabletop and I'm gonna take off my gloves and put them in the biohazard trash but you can keep yours and reuse them <laughs>